What's going on here, guys? Figured I'd do a quick update video. Um, I was doing a lot of experimentation with boosting the amount of received power I can get with the system. And what I decided to do and what I discovered is um, I put all the super caps in parallel now. This is what powers up the transmitter. So it power, the super caps power up this DC to DC boost board, which then powers the transmitter. And from that, we power our wireless receivers, and our wireless receivers run our loads. And right now, we're not using this battery in any way. This battery just recharges, which then runs the inverter. I was doing more experiments with maximizing my output power and receiver coils. And I discovered that... Um, this is the interesting effect I wanted to show. So I wrap aluminum foil very neatly around the uh, super caps. And you know, I just made a connection there. Green wire. And um, that green wire then goes through this coil. And for some reason, having that having the green wire coming off the foil that's around the super caps, then going through that coil for some reason gives more power. And we're consuming 24.86 watts. And here's the interesting thing. So watch what happens when I connect this um, load. This is a half decently lit incandescent load. Uh, 120 volt, 100 watt halogen. Lit to maybe quarter intensity. So Right there. The system's almost in a volts amperes reactive state. Where if I disconnect this load, it hardly changes uh, the reading. Like when I connect heavy loads, my input wattage to the transmitter drops, which is very interesting. So I'm going to connect that again. As you see, your input wattage drops. I'm doing a video real quick. It right here and show it. So this load is being run without affecting the uh, transmitter's input draw. <clears throat> We're basically running this load for free without without draining the source. And sometimes if I touch this wire in a certain spot, it will put more of a load on, which is interesting. There's like some type of RF field all around everything. Um, which as can be seen, we're doing that and we still have the impressive wireless power. Touches to anything metal nearby, it lights up very bright. So, very interesting stuff. You can feel the heat radiating off that thing. Even bring this light near the coil or the foil here, it'll get bright. So the foils and collecting and re-emitting that type of RF. So figured I'd show that. Um, and again, there's no degradation when this lights. So I got that going. And pretty much light an unlimited amount of these wireless lights depending on if I touch it to a piece of metal or not that was the interesting effect I wanted to show almost no change when I connect the, uh, the light here I'm able to get a pretty good amount of current now from this setup I'm discovering how to increase the current while keeping the voltage the same without placing a load on the uh, the input source. In fact, we can do that. It's very impressive now. This output here would then go to this battery to charge it, which would then run the inverter. I was just doing a, a bit of a change in the system, a bit more experimentation, trying to max out my output. So the way I keep it recharged now is I'll use this output to recharge this to 14.5 volts. Then this dumps into that battery. I mean, then this this battery dumps into the super caps. Sorry. 
keep getting my terms mixed up. Super caps and batteries. These are just regular film capacitors here, which is great for RF. If you're dealing with this type of RF stuff, you want to use mylar film capacitors or you want to use carbon film resistors too, which is very important. You can't use the wire wound resistors because it'll detune your stuff. So that's just what I wanted to show. And as you can see, there's pretty good current here because it makes things, uh, there's like almost this in high intensity spark here that will appear. We can demonstrate that. But things actually spark at 20. It's almost like a uh, high current spark. And the output here is about 50 volts at 1.5 amps. But the most interesting thing to me is how like there's almost no change on my input source when I connect this. Let's see if I can get that high current spark showing. Oops, I'm short something out. And when the system is in resonance, this board will emit like a tingling sound. So again, to recap, I reconfigured it. Um, all the super caps are in parallel now. It runs the DC to DC boost board. Powers up the transmitter. And that's it. The transmitter emits wireless power. All these receiver coils are a separate electrical system. Um, from that separate electrical system, we now recharge this battery which is disconnected at the moment you recharge that battery up to 14.5 volts with this output that I'm currently testing because when I'm testing this I noticed the best way to test it is to connect it to an incandescent bulb and see how bright it gets and not fully trust the meter because when that incandescent bulb gets really bright it will um it gives you an indication of how much real power is there like you can feel heat coming off it so and then from this output, I'd recharge this, and then this would then dump back into the input source and keep itself going. And the extra power comes from the ground connection. Two ground connections, and as well as this coil. This grounded coil that now sits in the center. Hopefully I can show as I move that, it'll get dim. And the extra power also comes from, uh, ouch, something's out of tune. The power also comes from the foil I wrapped around the super caps. And then connected to a full bridge rectifier. And that's the key to making the power useful. It's really hot. I should probably put this in a little thing of water and show that it can boil water. Alright, we'll get it up to a slight steam. And that's that's glowing, it's molten in there. To end the video, I think I'll connect this output up to the meter. So we're on DC current for this meter. I'll show you the, uh, the output. Really see the sparks now. So our output is 1.89 amps, our power consumption dropped to 18.46 watts, fluctuating between 18 and 19. This is the output of all of our combined receiver coils with the uh, foil wrapped around the cap, going to the uh, um, full bridge rectifier, the AC drive. And this kind of reminds me of Inventor 3 setup where he was using just large metal plates in a type of capacitor fashion where the large metal plate wrapped fully around his wireless emitter. It was like an exotic wireless capacitor he used, so that was interesting. Check out Inventor 3, I'll put the link in the description.
So, as you see, we got 1.89 amps short circuit current. And the interesting thing is, in past videos, I did have this higher up to 3 amps. But, it couldn't get that bulb as bright as it is now when it was at 3 amps, which was interesting. Which got me to connect that bulb, which got me to stop trusting the meter so much and just go by the brightness of an incandescent bulb. So, here's our voltage. Put the meter in voltage mode. So we're about 1.8 amps at almost 50 volts. We'll say it's 1.8 at 48 volts. And the power is obviously there because when I connect this incandescent bulb up, it lights. Here's a good look at the incandescent. It is a 120 volt, 100 watt incandescent. And here's the interesting thing I wanted to show. I'll put it back in current mode. We're at 1.86. Shorted it out. We're drawing less power for some reason. And we still have uh, wireless power. And for those who doubt this, I'll click this button. Entire board shuts off. System is dead. We are consuming no power now because it says off. So for those who doubt this, there you are. Turn it back on again. You can hear the system. T uh, it almost makes like a tingling humming sound. I'm not sure if you can hear that on camera, but I can hear it on my ear in my ears. It's like a the whole system is emitting like a tingling sound. Even uh, components, all components in the system, when in resonance, will emit a tingling sound. Yeah. So that's that. Trying to zoom in on these interesting sparks here. So this is our output from our receivers, the raw output. We'll now connect again our bulb. Incandescent. I'm going to explain the system again one more time before I end the video. Just get the meter leaves out of the way. I can demonstrate those very intense high current sparks. It's almost like a glow. Let me try and zoom in on that. It's like very high intensity spark. Uh, it's more of a high intensity glow. There it is. The high intensity glow. While that's going, I'll demonstrate how there's no load placed on the source when this runs. Or if there is, it's like it's very insignificant. There's virtually no load placed on the source when this comes on. As you see, that's one of the effects I wanted to show. And to sum it up, I would then connect this output instead of running the bulb. To charge this super uh, to charge this battery and the battery would recharge the super caps so that's that that's coming it up and again thank you to everyone who subscribes and supports this work uh, it's getting very interesting I expect real soon we'll have major upgrades to the system <coughs> it's been very busy lately work family issues all that sort of thing but Nevertheless, progress still occurs. It's a little slow at the moment, but it will keep occurring. This work will never stop. And thank you to everyone who supports it. And it's getting very interesting. And I'm on the verge. I'm on the verge of creating the perfect version of a much bigger 
transmitter that will be highly energy efficient and it will maximize those decoupling effects where when you're far enough away from the transmitter the power you receive will not place an electrical strain on the transmitter while the receiver's power loads. We're really trying to maximize and tune that effect. So, again, thank you to everyone who supports this work. And turn it off. off so. Thank you everyone. I hope you all take care and feel free to like, subscribe. And if you want to get the PDF, feel free. It's uh, $15. That link will be in the description too. I'm going to build all these systems. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Wouldn't be here without you guys.